Well, joining us in the studio is Philip Poole. He's head of macro and investment strategy at HSBC Global Asset Management. Philip, thanks for coming in. Great to see you. Right. Well, again, it's Europe, isn't it? And it just keeps on keeps on really dogging what's going on in terms of investor sentiment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a long-term workout problem for Europe. It's a 10-year it's a problem. It's not a two-quarter problem. So I think we still don't see fully the, the, the route to a solution. There's still more work to be done. Um, and I think it's going to take, uh, it's going to take time, and, and in the interim, it's going to be an overhang for the market. There's no doubt about that. Particularly Asia. I mean, we've seen you know, the quite deep declines that we've seen in both in uh, China, here in Hong Kong as well, compared to uh, peer indices in Europe or even the U.S. where there was a bit of positivity. Sure. I mean, emerging markets, even though the fundamentals are still strong and the growth prospects are much better than in Europe, uh, they've sold off in many cases more than the European markets, but they are still high beta uh, markets, that's the way investors still perceive them. And of course, at the margin, it's the, it's the flow of money from the developed world that uh, uh, impacts the emerging markets. It's the deleveraging process is what you're Absolutely. suggesting here. And especially banks in Europe too, having to pull their money to just get their capital adequacy requirements up. Well, that's right. I mean, we've got this uh, target to get capital adequ uh, adequacy ratios up by the middle of the year. Uh, and that's uh, it's going to be tough. So yeah, I think. Uni Credit being the latest of them there as well. I mean, yeah. that was quite something too. A uh, big call for cash. But all right, what, what does it mean for you as an asset manager? Well, obviously, we, we are looking for, for value for our, for our investors, for our clients. We see a lot of long-term value, but the short-term visibility actually is very limited. I think there's so much uncertainty. But we think the entry levels for, for investors that can take that medium to long-term view in many cases are, are, are attractive. Certainly corporate debt looks interesting uh, for us, investment grade, uh, emerging markets as it's well. Is that because you've seen corporate balance sheets despite the sell-off on equities uh, being strong? They're strong, yeah. Cor corporate fundamentals are strong and, and, and credit spreads have widened on the back of the risk-off uh, uh, move last year. So we think there's a good entry point there. Some of the equity markets valuations look very cheap on a price-to-book basis. Um, and you know, in, in reality the corporate sector in much of the emerging world, actually, is in pretty decent shape. Two years of uh, falling equities in Shanghai, and indeed Chinese equities having a torrid time of it. Does this, is this the right time now to be looking at them? Because um, by virtually every measure, they do seem to scream good value. Well, that's right. I mean, the, the time to buy things is when they're cheap, and, and, and they're certainly looking cheap. It doesn't mean, though, that they can't get cheaper, cheaper in a very yeah. short term. That's the issue. Mm. Uh, but we see, you know, for investors that can take a kind of uh, two-year horizon, or longer. We think that the entry points in China, in places like Russia as well, uh, in the emerging equity uh, markets are, are very interesting at the moment. So what do you go for there? I mean, is it the defensives? What are you looking at? Well, the defensives actually are not so cheap, and the financials in Asia are cheap, and the cyclicals are reasonably cheap, so we think there's more value there. We, we tend to look uh, to use a, a price-to-book return on equity framework, so we're looking for things that are cheap that deliver long-term value um, and we see those opportunities certainly in Asia as well as in other emerging markets. Right, so I mean what would be your perfect balance if you, you know, would you be half-half, would you be cash, would you be uh, looking at, you mentioned corporate debt, I mean how would you divvy all that up? Yeah, well I think really uh, there is need for, for a balance, I mean given the low level of visibility in the short term we wouldn't really be stacking all those bets in, in any one area. So I think Especially we, when you've got those storm clouds in Europe still yeah, there. Yeah. And not just Europe, but the, the United States is going to be an issue, I think, for markets. Election year, still no fiscal adjustment. So thinking about those structural issues, we, we, we really look for a balance across some of the, uh, the, the risk assets, including, of course, some of the uh, uh, some exposure still to, to, to government bond markets. So it's, it's a combination. And, and I think as, as we move through the course of the year, I think it will become clearer that Perhaps a solution is starting to, 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 to come together for Europe, and that can help to stabilize risk appetite. Uh, but at the moment, as I said at the beginning, I think it's still uh, an open question as to, to how that plays out. Yeah. Philip, thank you so much for that. Uh, thank Philip you. Paul from HSBC.